Hi everyone, I am Alex Harper, the founder of Women of Culture, which is a community designed to connect, empower, and inspire women through meaningful engagement with the arts. And this is part of our Women of Culture Wednesday series where I chat with different artists about their process, inspirations, and goals. And I'm so excited to be chatting with Juliet Jeffers today, who is a Caribbean American actor, writer, director, producer, and teaching artist. She has appeared in 18 films, 33 guest star TV roles, and over 60 national commercials. So um, she's quite a resume. I'm super excited to uh, dive in and chat with her more. So I am just going to invite her on. Let me just see if I can find her. Hold on. momentarily there we go Hi. hey how are you i'm good how are you good good I, there's yeah. always a, a bit of a lag so. right right yeah just adjusting so that i'm like yeah i know there it's we always go. hard to get right in the center <laughs> so thank you so much for having me yeah. I'm here. I'm excited. No, thank you. I, I'm, I'm excited to chat and um, get to know you better. So <laughs> thank you for taking the time. I love of you course. have a, a, like a tree coming out. <laughs> it's like tree exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it helps ground me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Well, I, I love to just dive right in and I'd love to have you sort of tell um tell people more about yourself just basically where you're from and how you got into theater and acting so thank you for that so yes yeah, so julia jeffers and i'm originally from the bronx my family's from the caribbean uh the majority of my all over the caribbean but the majority of my family is from uh saint kitts and nevis so two small mm -hmm. islands similar to you see you've heard of trinidad and tobago so it's like sister islands Sink and Nevis. So that's the majority of my family it's from there. And um, and I grew up sort of like, I grew up as a dancer. And oh. so I always like to perform and be on stage. And, and you know, it's like, it's, no one taught me this for, for some reason or another, when I was on stage, like the moves, like the way I was smiling and like giving them face and you know, teeth and da da da. All of that was just a part of the dance as well. You know, so I was always yeah. like, you know, like like to be on. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. And so then I went to the high school performing arts in Manhattan. You know, and the the same high school that the Fame movie uh, was made <laughs> from or of about. And um, and so that so then. I, I basically, as a dancer, I auditioned for the dance department and I auditioned for the acting department. And I got into both departments and I had to decide you can only go to one. And so mm -hmm. my logic was, it's easier to take, especially in the Bronx where I was, it was easier to take dance classes outside of school than it was to find an acting class. So I just thought, you know what, let me go to the acting department and then I can do my dance on the side. And then I eventually stopped dancing and just you know, kept doing the <laughs> acting. So, so I knew at a young age that this was what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, no, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I, I danced for a long time when I was younger and I was the opposite because I'm actually sort of a shy person. So like I was like not doing the big out there stuff. And, you know, right, <laughs> so, right. It's interesting that that led, you know, to, to acting for you, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, where did you where did you grow up? I grew up in Vermont, so okay. not a whole lot of, you know, um, art or culture going on there, which is probably why I appreciate it so much now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was dancing a lot in the in the Berkshires, actually. That was like the closest I could. Nice. I could, um, 
Yeah. So um, what was I going to say? Do you take any dance classes now? Or Not any? now. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I pretty much stopped like right after college, I would say, like in my early 20s. I was like, OK, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to yeah. focus on the acting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, can you can you walk us through sort of, I guess, where you went from there? I mean, having gone to um, high school and you studied acting in college as well? Or, you know? Well, no, because so what I did was I went to college so that I could have something to fall back on. So rather than yeah. go to the conservatory and, and, and really focus on acting. And this was really mostly like my parents, like in the back of my head, my head going, you know what, you need to have a plan B. And so I went to Hofstra University and I, um, I majored in, I had this like liberal arts major where you can have, you could focus on three things. So my concentrations were Spanish, French and communications. So like I said, no acting at all in college, but knew that as soon as I graduated that, that I yeah. was gonna pursue that and go into that. But, um, but yeah, so while I was in college, I, I lived in Spain for a year, studied there, um, yeah. my junior year abroad, I, I studied in France, did a summer program mm -hmm. there. So I got, you know, I was really much, uh, very much into languages and, and all of that. And, you know, I, I, I told myself that, oh, when I go out to LA, I'll give it like a year or two. And if it doesn't work, then I'll do something with languages. And of course, when I got out here, I was like, it's gonna take more than a year or two, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You stuck with it. <laughs> I stuck with it, definitely. How long would you say? I mean, how do you know? Like, I, I guess it's, it's like, it's a continuous process, probably. It's like, but how long do you think it took you to start to feel like, okay, this is, I'm on the right path. Or well, <laughs> I think, you know, and my parents were asking that too, because of yeah. course they were like, okay, are you sure you want to do this? Like, is this, you know, and they were like, you know, couldn't you just book a commercial or something? And they didn't realize that it's probably just as hard to book a commercial as like a guest spot on a TV show. And so, um, especially with the numbers, you know, it's a numbers game. And I think that once they saw that I started working, they were like, okay, yeah. Okay, good. They, they, I think they felt better about my decision. And, um, and I, you know, when I first came out here, got an agent pretty quickly. And, and then within like a year, booked my first guest star role on a TV show. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. So, so it started. And then of course, you know, it's, it's been up and down because that's the way this works and, and a lot of times, right? It's like, yeah. you know, I'm working a lot one time and then other time it's just like, slow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you kind of, it sounds like you always knew that you wanted to go to LA and pursue like TV and mm -hmm. film or, yeah. Yeah, when I, when I um, graduated from college, I, I was in New York. I got an apartment in New York City for mm -hmm. like nine months. And a friend of mine had moved out to LA from from high school. And she was like, you should come out here and just check it out. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, I really wanted to be, at that point, I wasn't so much like, oh, I want to do theater. I was like, I want to do film and TV. So, mm -hmm. and and at that time, there, were, there wasn't a lot of film and TV in New York at the time. Right. And so I was like, let me go where the film and TV world is. And that is LA. And so I, I came out here. And of course, when I came out to visit, I, I fell in love. I was like, ah, the weather is so great. And just yeah. laid back. And, you know, my, my thing that I always used to say was, if I have to struggle as an actor, I'd rather do it where, like, I can go to the beach or see the mountains right. than, like, be in New York City, like, on the subway looking at rats. Like, <laughs> You know, right. I was like, prefer, I think I, yeah. I prefer LA. Yeah, yeah, I I love LA. I mean, I've been in New York for like 15 years, but I, I mm -hmm. love going out there, and it's like, so, yeah, it feels like so <laughs> such a breath of fresh air. I know, like when you live there, it can get tiring with the traffic and all that stuff, but um, but yeah, that's uh, so. How long have you been out there now? Well, I've been back and forth a oh, lot. Okay. You know, like, because, uh, you know, different things have happened in my life where, like, um, 
my my brother passed away unfortunately and i got sick and I ended up moving back home for a little bit and then you know came back out here and then my mother got sick and i went home to take care of her so i've been back as a matter of fact i still have a place out in new york and so um you know if i need to be a new york hire i always say that to casting directors like i can be a new york hire you know i have a place there so i go back yeah. and forth a lot <laughs> Um, so I love to hear if there, if you have any like favorites of some of, I mean, you've had like a quite a diverse, um, resume of different roles. And I'm just curious what, what has been the most fun for you? So I did. So when I first came out here, it was like, you know, in the nineties, like, and I, so I did a lot of those sitcoms, like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Martin and, you know, a lot of those shows. And then more recently now, I, this year, I did an episode of All Rise. I did mm -hmm. um, Chicago Med. And, mm -hmm. and so I would say for me, in terms of like what my favorite TV role uh, mm -hmm. would be, um, I, had, I had a series regular role on a show called The Precinct, and it okay. never aired. And I played a detective, and she was tough, and she, you know, I just, I always wanted to play some kind of like, either like an action kind mm. of character in an action movie, yeah. or or a cop. And, and so that was a really great role, and I just really um, was able to sink my teeth into that. And unfortunately, like I said, it didn't pick up, get picked up. So it never went to series, but it was done. There was so much hype around it because the director of that pilot was the same director for the pilot episode of ER. And, and subsequently he had done a lot of uh, episodes of ER. So, so like I said, it was for NBC and there was so much hype around it. And yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't. Does that didn't like go break anywhere. your heart when that happens? Like right? it really did. I was yeah. like, "What?" You know, and I also it was like a great cast too, and mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I really thought that it was gonna go someplace, but but yeah. it didn't. And you know, I, I'm I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. So right, right. for sure. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, right, right. <laughs> um, what about like any? Um, you know, most challenging projects or roles? So I would say, um, I, okay, so here's one. I had, I booked a film in, and it shot in Washington State. And I, and it was really great because the director of the film was, a, he, he directed me in a commercial years back and he remembered me and mm -hmm. offered me the role, which was really great because I didn't have to audition for it. Yeah. And, um, but he didn't know, they didn't know at mm -hmm. the time because they just offered it to me that I was actually, I wasn't auditioning at the time because I had just had surgery on my ankle. Okay. And so this is back, this was two years ago. And I had okay. surgery on my ankle. And so, I we were like, well, yeah, you know, I'd love to do it, but I have a boot, <laughs> like I had a boot on, and so it was sort yeah. of like wobbling, you know. Right. Like... And um, and so and so it worked out. I mean, thank God, I still shot it, and they were able to shoot around it. But there was a, li you know, it was a little bit challenging because I just didn't feel like a hundred percent. I didn't feel myself because I had this boot on, you know. But it ended up working for the character because it's um sort of like a um, suspense thriller type film okay. and somebody tries to kill me in the end. Like, it's just, uh, <laughs> I don't want to give away too much. Right, right, um, right. <laughs> yeah, but it was okay. Like, I mean, I guess they didn't shoot your foot or how did you do that? They, yeah, so that's the thing. They didn't, you know, a lot of, uh, there were no, everything was like from the, the up a body up yeah. you know okay. um and so yeah there was one actually no i did there was one long shot that they did where i took the boot off because it was a removable boot and i took the boot off and i was able to walk a little bit right. but i certainly couldn't run right. you know that wasn't happening 
Right. Yeah. You're like, and don't tell my doctor. <laughs> right. Right. You know, I did actually have to get permission from the doctor, and oh, they were like, yeah. they were like, sure, you know, go for it, right. you know, but be careful. <laughs> You know? <laughs> oh, so that that you know so at, at least it wasn't like the the cop role that i was telling you about like i have to like run yeah. around chasing bad guys right. you know like it it worked out right <laughs> um i'm curious if you know if you in um retrospect you can think of any things that helped you sort of get to where you are now and because i mean what a you know, having seen friends go through it and stuff, I mean, it seems like you, you were able to get an agent quickly and booked something, you know, relatively quickly in the world of Hollywood. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, do you have any, have any secrets <laughs> to, that you can oh. share? Well, I mean, to me, I feel like it's, if it's something that you are really passionate about and you know that you want to do, then stick with it right mm -hmm. because yeah. because no matter what it's it's going to happen like if you truly believe that the, that you are meant to do this this is what you are here to do then it will happen and also like for me one of the things like if i had to like talk to my you know 20 year old self right i would say trust the process mm -hmm. yeah. because i know when i like i said i came out here originally thinking oh, I'll give it a year or two and then I'll be a star, right? <laughs> or if I'm not a star, then I'm going to not do it, right? right? And so it's like, but but what I've learned is, you know how they say the, the, the what is it? The trip is the journey, you know? It's like, oh, right. <laughs> something like that. I know I'm messing it up. But yeah, it's I like, enjoy, enjoy the journey as yeah. opposed to be like, oh God, I want to be a star. I want to be this, that, or that. You know, of course you have your goal, but enjoy the journey. And, and and don't rush it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and now, like, in terms of, with, I'm always, like, I'm always producing. I'm always creating. I, yeah. I don't sit around waiting for the phone to ring. I got the best advice from a friend of mine uh, who's an actor. And this is when I very first moved out here. And he said to me, as an artist, you know, so much, so many of us, it's like, we're not necessarily, we're not working that nine to five grind, right? right. We are artists and we're creating all that, but we have to sort of think about it in a nine to five kind of way, right? And so if any other job you put 40 hours into working, well, what if as an artist you put 40 hours in, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have an audition, then you're working on creating something. You're working, you're, you're taking classes, you are, yeah. you know, just practicing monologue. So it's like always, and that's how I've done it, where mm -hmm. I'm, oh, I don't necessarily do 40 hours a week. Of, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I put in work yeah. every day, like at least five days a week, I put in work, right. Right. you know, that towards my, ca my craft. Right, right. Um, that sort of is a good segue into talking about some of the other things that you do because you all are also behind the scenes a lot and um, love to hear more about about some of that work as well. Yeah, so I I was I would say when I was when I was younger I saw a one woman show by Whoopi Goldberg. Uh -huh. And uh, my aunt sent me, she actually gave, she videotaped it. Um, and so I had a VHS tape. I don't know if you know what that is. You know, VHS tape, remember those? Yeah. Um, of, of Whoopi Goldberg's one woman mm -hmm. show. And then later on, I was able to actually see it on Broadway, which is really cool. Oh. And, and so that inspired me. I was like, wow, that's so cool. Um, creating characters and doing these different characters and that was something that I always like to do growing up in New York City where you have it's like it's true melting pot like I grew up we were the first black family to move into our neighborhood it was all Italian you know the Jewish people like I grew up around so many and then the different Caribbean uh, accents and, and Puerto Ricans Dominicans all of that and so I, I, I'm, I'm like a sponge in that way. And I mm -hmm. sort of like absorb it. So I'm very much, I, I look at mannerisms. I look at, I can pick up accents. Mm -hmm. And so that helped with creating these characters. 
And so my very first solo show was called Batman and Robin and the Boogie Down. And it's about my brother and I growing up in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And and so I do basically all these characters that we grew up with from childhood all the way up until he passed away. I mentioned he passed away. And so it's really a tribute to him. Mm -hmm. And um, and so once I did that show, which was it, it's so great, such a great experience, healing on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, and once I did that show, I started feeling like, you know, I want, I want to help other people create their solo show as well, especially yeah. because this particular one was so based on, um, you know, healing. And yeah. we all need healing at some point in our lives, right? Yeah. And so... Yeah. I so I just I just became really passionate about helping others on that journey. So mm -hmm. so I you know so subsequently I've written now I have five one woman shows that I've written and performed, wow. and I have uh, I'm a, an advisory board member of the LA Women's Theater Festival, mm -hmm. and just so, for those who don't know what it is. LA Women's Theater Festival, we've been around for over 25 years. And, um, and we create a space for women to perform their solo show. Mm -hmm. And this year, we mm -hmm. didn't do a solo show festival because of uh, COVID. But we are now uh, going to be doing what we call Empowerment Weekend. Usually we do Empowerment Day, it's just one day, but now it's a full weekend. It's all gonna be virtual. And it's it's gonna be August, from August 28th through the 30th. And you can go to lawtf.org for in, information about that. But they're gonna be different workshops. It's only $25 for the whole weekend. And so there'll be different workshops on um, uh, creating a solo show and, and marketing your show and, and what goes into creating your team, you know, getting a director and the tech people and all of that stuff. So it's really some really great panels and workshops that'll be happening that weekend. So very much involved with them. And recently I was asked to curate a, a solo show festival called Black Voices. And mm -hmm. so that's going to be through the Wi Fi Theater. And that runs from September 12th through November 15th. And okay. my show is going to be opening the festival. So my show called oh, Judgment wow. Day. Yeah. Wow. And so Judgment Day is, it's just very, like, it's apropos to, to what's going on right now mm -hmm. in, our, in our country and world. Um, you know, I deal with police brutality and also mm -hmm. just really put God to the test of like, why have you allowed all of this, all of these injustices to happen to black people? And so it just really explores a lot of things that I think a lot of people think, but they don't say out loud, you know? Right. So, um, so yeah, so those are the two main things that I'm working on right now. Wow, that's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Mean, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's got to have been a bit of a challenge to not be able to be out performing and doing things, you know? So, I mean, that's really cool that you found other ways um, to, to continue and um, to do some really cool stuff. Right now. Well, you know, I always say that, um, and I see delusional, D delusional diva is in the house, Sky, who is a board member of the LA Women's Theater Festival as well. And, her and I will be conducting a panel called Artist as Activists. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I've said this many times and I'll say it again, that we as artists, like our job is to heal, our job is to create, right? And so for me personally, when things are happening in my world, right? And, and I'm affected by it. You know, there's so many things we can do. We can go out there, we can protest. We can, you know, uh, try to make change um, in so many different ways. For me, it's, I, I start to write, you know, yeah. I, I write about it. And, and so it's like, how do you, what, what it, see, I, I always tell people that like, you can, you can do something or you can just stand aside and, and watch, right? And so I feel like if you stand aside and watch, then you are part of the problem. 
you know so it's like what and 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 we and we're not saying it's like whatever whatever level you're at you know so for me i i didn't go out and protest because i have an autoimmune disease and i was just like very particular on like i don't want to catch anything but yeah. but but i but i'm creating i'm yeah. creating and by me creating and especially with this show coming up judgment day having this panel where we talk about this um that's my way of of making a difference of doing something yeah. you know that's huge and i think um you know there's also a lot of people that um respond to and you know art can be so impactful and um you know create a response that sometimes you don't get just from watching the news or you know like i i definitely exactly and also you know i remember one of my teachers always used to say and i and i, I always mess this quote up so i'm not even going to try it um but you know it's like get them laughing and while their mouths are open throw the truth in there you right. know so it's like that's an, right so that's another way of you know when we're do when we're performing you know if you if we if you because you don't want nobody wants to be preached to right. you know what i mean especially like when you're when you're going to be entertained so yeah. if you can figure out a way to get your message across um in a creative way an entertaining yeah. way then that it's it's better received yeah, for sure. That can be like very impactful. So um, yeah, is Judgment Day something that you wrote recently or? Well, I wrote it um, back in I started writing it back in 2015. And okay. it was the week when uh, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling were murdered, like days apart from one another. It all happened in the same week. And then and then there were riots and you know and, and and fires and all that stuff and and so I was so as I mentioned you know it's like I was so uh, hurt and 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 angry and you know just did not know what to do and I just started writing just mm -hmm. started writing and and what it was is I was angry at God you know mm -hmm. and I was like how how can God I mean we I know if, if anybody has you know believes in God or a higher power or whatever it's like that's always that's always been a question. I remember even as a little kid, I remember yeah. thinking that like with all, all the people that are suffering, all the good people that are suffering, why do they have to suffer? I don't understand, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's how that came about. Yeah. Oh, I, I really, I'm interested to see it now. <laughs> it sounds, um, I mean, do you feel like in the writing and performing you, you came to some conclusions <laughs> found it sounds like it was a little bit therapeutic yeah and and it yes for sure yeah. but i also purposely make it so that the audience gets to decide mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like the audience yeah. is because i said it i it's set up in a kind of court situation and so the audience is the jury yeah you know yeah. that makes sense so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you gotta watch uh, it to see how it ends <laughs> yeah yeah no I, for sure I don't want you to give anything away <laughs> don't really right. want to watch the whole thing but um, mm -hmm. what was I gonna say um, yeah no it's uh, that's, it's interesting also that you kind of were always in wanting sort of to go for TV and film and you've sort of found your way back to, to theater in a way <laughs> it's true but you know why it mostly it, be, it was because I didn't want to sit around and wait for the phone to ring. Yeah. So it's like during those down times, right. I need to create something. And then yeah. now um, with all of this material, and especially now that, you know, what people are doing so much, they're creating their own content and they're putting it on YouTube and they're, you know, and then they're getting their own TV shows. Like my goal with my shows is to create, I mean, there, there's one that I want to, two actually that I know of that, I, that I've been working on uh, creating a film version of it and then another TV version of it. So, you know, it's like I have the material, I have the content, so now I just have to switch it up and, yeah. you know, convert it into something that will have a, a bigger, a wider audience. Oh, awesome. Um... Yeah, I was curious, this is sort of my, my last question, but just if you have um, 
a dream role or project <laughs> in in your head? <laughs> well, I mean, so that's similar to what I was just talking about, where I would love to star in my own TV show, right? And so because I have this material already, I'm like, oh, well, which one can I convert into a TV show? I would love to create, you know, because I'm uh, not only in front of the camera, but also uh, create something for the big screen. And and I, I just, I always like, I, I like bringing people together too. So I want to be able to create a project where I can put my friends in it. Yeah. You know, I have so many friends that are really good artists, right? Yeah. But they're not they're they're not getting the work, and right. so the, I would love to be able to do that, create a mm -hmm. project where I can put my friends in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I, hope that, I hope that you can you can do that. It seems like you know you make things happen, so I, I have faith in it. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you so much. This is really great to learn more about you. And I'm excited to check out um, LA Women's Theater Festival and the Black Voices Festival at uh, White Fire Theater. They both sound amazing. So Thank you um, so much. Yeah, thank you again. It was great to, to chat. And I hope, um, hope you have a great rest of the night. Thank you. You too. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Bye.